Hi, I'm Cade Murphy, and I'm joined by Jeff Lucier of Aspirant Leadership Coaching and Consulting, here to talk about a survey that he did with millennials across the country, and really excited to hear about it. How's it going, Jeff? I'm great, Cade, and you? Doing well, doing well. Looking, looking forward to really tapping into what insights you got out of you know, this survey and, and how we're going to move forward together in our conversations, but also how we can add value to everybody else. How does that sound? It sounds great. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. So thinking about this survey and, you know, I've heard a bit about it, but what really led, led up to this, you know, doing the survey about the millennials? Sure. Thanks, Kate. So it, it was pretty interesting, actually, as I found myself in conversations with people and this, this topic of millennials would come up, the discussions were, were really just taking off. And to me, that was, that was saying that there was something here, something more than maybe what I had originally anticipated. And it didn't seem to matter uh, what age the person was that I was speaking to. It didn't matter what level of leader they were. Uh, everybody has an experience related to millennials or demographics in the workplace. And what's more interesting is that everybody seems to have an opinion on it. It doesn't matter who you talk to. It was, everybody's got something to say about this. So it's really fascinating to think that millennials now are 37% of the workforce. They make up the largest cohort uh, within the workforce. So they really are uh, sort of a force to be reckoned with, is, if you will, as they move into a pretty important roles in organizations and even into management. Yeah, I know. I've I've had the same experience as talking to leaders in, in organizations. Everybody has something to say about the millennials. It's a really hot topic. And you know what? Millennials included. Uh, a lot of millennials are talking about millennial leadership and you know, the, the threat that a lot of people are seeing in the millennials moving to the workforce is big. And, you know, what I'm maybe not seeing so much is what the opportunity is, which is interesting. But, you know, it's neat that now you have some more information that's Canadian based in this that, you know, everybody can sort of draw on to, to look at what the path forward might be. So, you know, thinking about the survey, what were some of the key insights that you got out of that? Yeah, so we, we looked at uh, over 300, uh, 300 uh, millennials from across the country here in Canada. So we got a really great response rate and really that boiled down into uh, five different themes. So in essence, we were asking about what those workplace experiences were like, what was it like working with your manager? And there was a question that really provided the bulk of the information in that set in order to retain you within your current role, your current organization, what's something that your manager could do more of, less of, or differently and in addition to that, what's something that you feel your manager just doesn't understand about you? And that gave uh, just you know, a rich array of data, uh, insights, and so forth from, uh, from these 300 respondents. And that came into, really boiled down into about five different themes. So I'll just walk you through uh, these five themes really quickly. They're in no particular order. The first one is to, to really listen, trust, and involve me in this concept of, of belief. So you hear around empowerment so understanding that millennials now are not just you know the new grads and entry-level positions anymore you've got uh, some that are, are approaching their mid-30s uh, like we've talked about are moving into management roles and whatnot and they're looking for the space and the autonomy to contribute um, so that was a big theme uh, in, in the survey and a second theme was around growth and learning we know that millennials are really keen on growing on learning it's what they've seen throughout their entire lives. You think about improvements that we've seen, technology and so on and so forth. Uh, but they want these really meaningful conversations and they want structure around it. So one of the concepts that, uh, that really came through loud and clear is they want time with their manager. They want it to be face-to-face. -face. They want it formalized. They want it structured. They don't want it fly by night, you know, kind of stop by the informal, hey, let's just grab coffee quickly. Let's have a quick chat. They want it structured. And that's uh, that the investment is demonstrated through that around their learning and growth. So that was a, that was a second theme. A third theme that came through was this idea of I am not a stereotype, and nobody wants to be stereotyped. Let's let's face it. Um, but this group in particular really wants their managers, their management, to understand them as individuals, um, and that means really getting to know them and and showing that you genuinely care. Uh, so this notion of, you know, the traditional space, uh, professional distance, if you will, between manager and employee, that may need to be reevaluated. And, and, and we're seeing a lot of that in terms of developments in the workforce. 
Now, under that also came work-life balance, all right? So the idea is if you know me and you know what's important to me, you understand that maybe I'm a parent, you understand that maybe I have extracurricular activities that are really critical to me or really uh, uh, other causes that I'm involved with uh, that are really important. And that comes through getting to know me as a person and not just treating me like a stereotype. Um, a fourth theme that came through, which is one that I, I suspect you'd see uh, uh, in the workforce more broadly, and that is the idea of recognition, uh, appreciating me, appreciating the work that I do, not just the outcome, but also the effort. All right, so that was a fourth theme that came through. And the fifth one was around effective team leadership. So everything from visioning and communication and clarity, uh, right down to, to understanding responsibilities and accountability uh, that comes with getting things done. And under that umbrella, there were things like, you know, creating a positive work environment with positive dynamics and also having fun. Uh, along the way, so the leader really setting the tone around uh, around what those dynamics are like within the team and just good leadership overall. So just to run back through them quickly, this this listen, trust, and involve me piece around autonomy, the growth and the learning through meaningful conversations that are focused and structured, uh, treating people not as stereotypes but getting to know them as individuals, appreciation and recognition, and the fourth one, or sorry, the fifth one around just really effective uh, team leadership, good leadership overall. Mm. Yeah, what I like about those themes is they're actually really, really well aligned with what I've actually read in, in other areas, you know, in research out of the States, but, you know, even in, in books and stuff like that as well. What's, what's interesting is I see these as a big opportunity. I'm seeing a lot of clarity from millennials and what they want, but how, you know, maybe you can shed some light on this. How how are these things really being perceived in organizations coming from the millennials? Yeah, and that's that's a really good question, Kate, is uh, that perception piece is, is actually really, really critical. And it reminds me of some research that I came across that uh, where you had managers and their subordinate, millennial subordinates, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, both being asked them what they should be trained on, right? What, what were the missing skills? And what was interesting is while there was some alignment or, across you know, certain skill sets that they felt uh, that both groups felt the millennials didn't have. There was a particular one where um, the managers really felt that millennials didn't have the interpersonal skills uh, to be successful in their roles. And for millennials, that skill didn't show up at all. And so what it, what it tells you is this, this concept of perception actually is really, really critical. Uh, one of the questions in, in the survey uh, asked millennials, how often they are having learning and career conversations with their managers. But what was the more important question was the one that followed that asked, to what degree did, does, uh, does your experiences meet your expectations of how often or how frequently you should be having these conversations? And on a one to 10 scale, it barely, it barely jumped over the, uh, the midpoint of the scale, indicating again that there's more room there, that they're expecting more. So that your concept, or your, the idea of perception, Kate, that you brought up is a really good one. Yeah, a absolutely. It's, you know, that gap is critical for a lot of people, you know, real and perceived threat to the organization and what's going on here. The other thing I know I've noticed is that desire for lots of touch points seems to be misinterpreted as wanting to be micromanaged or needing extra direction all the time when it maybe for the millennial, it's not really about that so much as, knowing that somebody's there having those constant touch points with their leader to, you know, have a better picture of what's going on. Um, you know, this perception piece I see coming up a lot and, you know, there's room to gain a lot of clarity between what millennials need and, and what an organization thinks they need or how it actually plays out. Um, thinking back to the survey here, what was most surprising for you that came out of it? Yeah, you know, coming into this, uh, you know, having a pretty good base of knowledge, and I know that you have that same base as well, Kate, is, you know, you come to expect a few things, uh, a few things in the results, but there were, there were two or three things that came out of the survey that I, I be honest with you and say I did not expect. And, and the one, one the, probably the biggest one, and you touched on it, was this, this concept of micromanagement. And so I did just a quick text analysis, just a, it's just a count of the words in the survey through the, the qualitative uh, results that were offered, um, and, and all, all it really, what really happened was, was fascinating. The, the word micromanager 
micromanaging or micromanagement came up in the survey was stated exactly, one of those three words was stated uh, more often than any other non-generic word in the survey. So in other words, it came up more often than words like feedback or development or clarity or communication or whatever, you, whatever else. And so that's a pretty powerful message, you know, again, aligned to that first theme around, in essence, believe in me, let me go, give me, you know, give me that autonomy. But that micromanagement term to come up uh, so specifically is quite powerful, and I didn't anticipate that. And you know what the second most popular word I used was, Kate? Take a guess. I don't know, Jeff. It was uh, listen. Wow, yeah. So, so that, was, that was probably the biggest surprise that came up. I, I think I expected work-life balance to be a, a bigger theme. Um, it did show up in one of the, in the sub theme again around, you know, not treating people as stereotypes and getting to know them it was certainly there, but maybe not as strong as what I expected. Um, the team leadership piece, I, I didn't see that one coming. Uh, you know, we think of millennials as being very, very selfish, very self-centered, uh, and so forth in terms of the stereotypes, but for, for there be, for there to be a lot of commentary around, look, I want good leadership, not just for me. I want it for our team. I want that clarity and vision. I want to know where we're going. I know, I want to know how we're going to get there. And I want to follow that leader who's really going to help everybody uh, to be better and to achieve our goals. So that, that concept of, of maybe bigger picture thinking beyond the individual, uh, again, didn't necessarily see that one coming, but I think that's a, a real positive take, uh, you know, positive result from, from the survey. Wow. Yeah, a big focus, you know, that transition from, you know, maybe a little bit less management, more leadership as, as being a big desire for millennials. That's you know, I, I've seen that in, in a book called That's Not How We Do It Here. It's a, a story of meerkats. It's quite interesting. I'll, I'll pass the information along to you. Um, but it's, you know, this, this aspect is quite interesting. I didn't expect to hear micromanage come up that much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that ties into how organizations are perceiving these people. And, you know, they want the touch points, they want the leadership and not necessarily the management, which is, is different. It's, it's different. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating too, because even executives can, can look at, look at, you know, that theme and say, well, I've got nothing to do with that. Well, that's not true actually, because executives really set the tone within organizations around concepts like culture and trust and so forth. So if you have a senior manager who is kind of looking over their shoulder uh, at the executive level, not really secure in, in their role or confident in what they in what they do as a leader, then likely they're going to they're going to translate that down or transfer that down to their potential millennial direct report in terms of getting more involved in their work, looking over their shoulder, not giving as much away, not giving the autonomy and empowering them, and so on and so forth. So it's all connected within organizations. But this concept of micromanagement versus autonomy, I think it also has something to do with with millennials growing up. Uh, if you will, in the workforce uh, now that they're not just those new grads uh, anymore, they're playing more significant roles. And, you know, my challenge to leaders is, look, if you're not going to hire great people and allow them to do great work, then why did you hire them, right? What's, what's, what's the point, right? If you're going to do their work for them or you're going to keep them closed into, uh, a, you know, a tight little box. So I, I think that it's important to, to focus on empowerment in the skills that come, that come with lead, uh, in leaders uh, to, to be really focused on empowering uh, their individuals in creating that autonomy. Yeah, and what's coming up for me is, you know, giving some space and having some trust with these people to actually grow into their roles instead of, you know, what, what I hear about a lot of times is, you know, how much time are you spending working below your pay grade by doing this micromanaging and not having that trust? When, when you're thinking about this and, you know, as, you know, a leader and organization wants to transition into less management, more leadership. What's, what's the first step in that, do you think? Well, I, I've always been a big fan of, of self-awareness. And I think as a leader, you got to understand yourself. And, and if, if giving away work, if you will, or creating space for people to, to, uh, to have a, you know, autonomy or this, this concept of empowerment, if this is something that you struggle with as a leader, then, then that's okay because that's the first step is, is gaining that understanding that, look, this is something I, I'm not very comfortable with. So that's where it moves more into skill, uh, skill development and, and understanding the, the, the steps that you can take as a leader to empower others 
while still maintaining a sense of control, which is a very challenging balance, right? But it is achievable. So I think it all starts with awareness and leadership, uh, knowing your own biases, gaining feedback from those around you. And in the very least, one way you can do that is simply asking the questions, right? So gain that feedback uh, from your millennial direct reports or anybody who's around you who will give it to you straight. Hey, look, I, do you feel like you're getting enough space to make decisions here? What could I be doing to uh, maybe give you a bit more autonomy in your role? What would that need to look like? While also understanding that I have obligations as a leader. The buck may stop with, with me, right? There's accountability in place. And so I can't give you maybe everything that, you, that you'd like in terms of autonomy, but maybe there are some, uh, you know, maybe there's more space that I can give you, but that needs to start with a discussion, which again is, is, comes back to the notion of self-awareness. Where do I stand on, on these types of things? Yeah, I'm hearing in a way that's not going to be a threat to the leader themselves, you know, so they can still control the situation or have a sense of control in it and make sure that everybody's successful. They're not, you know, throwing their direct reports back out to the wolves. You know, I can see that transition being something that's going to be key when you have somebody that's used to being micromanaged at some degree to now giving them more space that that could create a gap for them. So a lot of being careful of, of how to manage that transition carefully for success. Yeah. So what's, what's next here for you? Well, I'm excited to, to, um, to, to be able to bring these results from the survey, uh, uh, you know, to leaders. So the infographic and uh, the actual report uh, is just in its final stages of publication. So it'll be coming out uh, probably towards the end of January, which I'm very excited about. Uh, in addition to that, I'm working on, uh, a bit of a quiz, if you will. So it, it talk about um, a very short, in, in sort of a fun type scenario-based assessment that will allow leaders to kind of test their, their knowledge or their thinking about leading millennials. Uh, so it's all scenario-based. It's, it's, it comes from the themes within this survey. Uh, so I'm working on that, to, and that should be coming up uh, very soon. And I'm also working on a book, you know, that, uh, that takes into account many of these concepts uh, around millennials and, and with the understanding again that for those leaders or, or those in organizations who thought they maybe could could outweigh uh, you know you know wait out I guess this this cohort it's not going to happen because the, the cohort is gaining steam and now as we've seen they're the largest cohort in the work in the workforce and are just going to to increase from here uh, so it's really about how do we effectively lead this generation how do we effectively prepare uh, these leaders for those roles that are upcoming and uh, and all work together and, and leverage the skills, experiences, mentality uh, that they have uh, to create a strategic advantage. Yeah, wow, absolutely. Where where can people go to get this quiz or how do you get involved in that? Yeah, well, we certainly can go to my website at aspiring.ca. Uh, there's uh, more information that we're loading on again in, in uh, in January towards the end of the month. Uh, soon we will have the infographic up there and we will have the full report um, on, based on the survey results and then there'll be more resources added uh, in the future uh, related to this as well. Great. Well, I'd like to thank you for being part of this interview with me and talking about this millennial, you know, the millennial generation. It's, I think it's picking up steam. It's, you know, it's here now, but it's going to be a big hot topic over the next few years. So I appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure, Kate. Thanks very much. So you can learn more about Jeff and Aspirant at www.aspirant.ca. Thanks for joining us and we hope to talk to you soon.